Hi, this is Brian Forrester of HiddenIncaTours.com, and today we're exploring Ayacucho in the highlands of Peru. Now, Ayacucho is located, it's about a seven-hour drive from the west coast, or from the coast of Peru. We, of course, left from Paracas, and this is where we find a colonial church that before that was an Inca temple, that before was a megalithic structure. So you have an ancient megalithic structure, which on top of the Inca built their temple, and on top of that, the Spanish built their colonial church. And so we'll see why this is the case through studying the construction techniques. Now, luckily, as you've seen already, quite a bit of quadcopter footage using my quadcopter Wiracocha, which gives incredible views. So the staircase may be ancient, so-called megalithic, very high quality. And then you have this wall, which looks like it was rebuilt during Inca times of the megalithic stones. Again, high quality craftsmanship in the staircase and then very poor at the bottom where the little dog is. And as we look along the uh, polygonal walls, you see some of the workmanship is very fine and some is crude. The very fine work is the oldest, that's the megalithic work, and then after that, the Inca work, which is rebuilding of the wall. And we're also going to see cataclysmic damage at this site, which may very well correspond with other locations on the planet of a series of events that happened possibly 12,000 years ago. I know that's hard to believe, but that is the dating that a number of scientists are telling us that there, was ma there were major cataclysmic events on the planet. So as we look at the upper wall, you see it's very intact on the right, and then in the center, the surface of the stone has fallen off. And in fact, in some areas, like in the center now, melted. Now, melting of this basalt stone requires at least 2,000 degrees Celsius, and that is twice as hot as a normal fire. So it was not a localized fire. It could actually have been a burst of plasma from the sun as theorized by geologist Robert Schock and others. Again, look at the difference in the quality of the workmanship, the very fine work in the upper section, the very crude work in the lower section, the lower clearly rebuilt. And then here again, as we go along, you see these finely shaped stones have been reassembled, likely in Inca times. And the farther we go to the right, here we see perfect construction technique. Basalt is a hard stone, well beyond the hardness of the bronze tools of the uh, Inca. And then the even rougher work above with the white chalk material, that is Spanish colonial rebuilding. So now we're going to focus in on the actual melted basalt surfaces. You can see also where stone has cracked and possibly even blown off. Again, this requires at least 2000 degrees uh, centigrade, not a typical normal local fire. And then here, uh, classic polygonal construction. Uh, part of it is rebuilt during Inca times. Part of it is original, quite finely done, megalithic work such as there. And then more deterioration on the right as we go into Inca reconstruction. And here, another overview of uh, this site called Vilcaswaman, which is the name of the town. In Inca, that means the sacred falcon, but the original Inca name may have been different. It's quite possible that the Spanish, as they typically did, was take a sacred Inca name and slightly alter it, and that took away the power of the name itself, 
And the name itself originally would give us a description of what the function of the site was during Inca times and possibly even in pre-Inca times. So very few tourists visit uh, Vilcas Waman. This was our second trip there and we will probably return every maybe three to five years. And again, here's another quadcopter view for you. Uh, rebuilt stone wall in the uh, foreground that could have been done by archaeologists. And then we have the Inca and megalithic work. And now we move away from this site and go to another location close by. It's a temple complex that was part of this uh, overall structure. Rarely is there one construction in a location. They're usually more than one. And just because I was having fun with the quadcopter, we're now going to take the quadcopter away from this central location, uh, Vilcas Waman, and we're going to head to the other section which is here, called the Ushnu, and it again is a reconstruction. There is no Spanish reconstruction here. We have Inca, and then we have pre-Inca. So during Inca times, this was a temple of some kind, maybe a temple of the sun, maybe a temple of the moon. Uh, those terms are used way too often. But you see that most of this appears to have been reconstructed during the Inca times. The walls were put back together. The stone again is basalt, which is at least six out of 10 on the most scale of hardness, with diamond being 10. Bronze tools are 3.5, so bronze could not affect or quarry this material. And the quarry itself is six kilometers away on top of a mountain, we were told, when we were there. So here, clearly on the right, is rebuilding using much older materials. And then on the left here, this could be the original, much more tightly fitting construction. Uh, here again, uh, at the bottom, you see very tight fit on the top, rebuilding. Again, the Spanish probably had nothing to do with this specific location because most sacred sites of the Inca were either converted into churches or were left abandoned and it was made prohib or it was prohibited that the Inca and uh, their descendants visit these or do any kind of worship. So it's only during uh, archaeological excavations starting more or less in the 20th century that these sites were open to the public, regulated, cleaned, taken care of. Um, all of this work was done and taken care of by the Ministry of Culture of Peru that uh, actually does a very fabulous job with taking care of the thousands of ancient archaeological sites located in Peru. Now this gate was once part of a much larger complex and you see part of it is original and part of it has been reconstructed. Look at the terrain, it's very mountainous. So moving stones from the quarry would have been relatively difficult. It's not huge like we see at uh, other sites like Saxe Waman or Machu Picchu. But we know this was a ceremonial complex for the Inca people because these are uh, engravings or surface cutting into stones. Uh, these were used for divination, normally using chicha beer or possibly llama blood for 
making predictions about the future. They did not do human sacrifice. They did not use human blood. All stories such as that were made up by the Catholic Church and the early chronicles of the Spanish, who were uh, quite racist people. So when you actually speak to the descendants of the Inca themselves, they tell you <clears throat> that the Inca were actually a very benign people. They were not... Um, they were expansionists, yes. They had a very large military, yes. But they used um, they used warfare only if necessary. Usually, their expansion would be done with negotiation, because most people of neighboring tribal people or cultures actually wanted to become uh, part of the Inca civilization. Uh, because the Inca were very advanced, especially in terms of things like um, agriculture and the movement of water. Uh, they had developed upwards of 3,000 varieties of potatoes at the time of Spanish conquest and 200 or possibly 2,000 varieties of corn. They also produced quinoa and many other um, amazing superfoods, which are actually becoming quite popular today internationally. This, of course, is quadcopter Wiracocha doing a vertical shot, coming down looking at the main complex of the Ushnu. Near the top center, you see that large megalithic block that was used during Inca times for the Inca king and queen, or Sapa Inca and Koya Inca, in order to make um, pronouncements, and other officials would use that complex to make pronouncements to the general public uh, in order to inform them about the goings-on of the entire civilization. Uh, the Inca world was not an empire, it was a confederation of states, and its original name in the Inca language was the Tawantinsuyu, which means the four quarters of the world, because the Inca world was divided up into four different sectors. So that's what's also fascinating about the Inca language in that every place name is a description of a specific place. So Vilcaswaman, we don't I don't know again what its original name was, but that name would have been a description of what the function was. So again we see megalithic work and we see Inca work, and in some locations, Spanish colonial, some evidence of ancient cataclysm. And this is the Ushnu and Vilcaswaman in the highlands of Peru, near the city of Ayacucho. Please, if you do visit Peru and want to look at archaeological sites, do not solely go to Machu Picchu, though Machu Picchu is the gem and the crown jewel of the Inca world, there are hundreds of other locations such as this that you can visit. Very worthwhile. There are many, of course, in the Sacred Valley area near Machu Picchu, but um, many, many locations in the highlands of Peru.